adaption sorry of uh, traditional Islamic law to a uh, modern halal food industry. Okay, um, are we all with the same slides? Are we good? Yes. Okay, um, good afternoon. Thank you for being the last until with me. Um, I'll be uh, trying my best as the last presenters. Um, my presentation today is about the practical adaptation of Islamic law to modern, especially halal industry. And my presentation and my paper um, focuses on the specific case of uh, Shaki in Malaysia. So for the contents, um, I will, of course, introduce uh, what the topic would be and how, like, what kind of methodology I used and also um, modernization of traditional Islamic law, how it changed into like modern way um, and how the specifically Malaysia government and the Institute adapted to their halal industry. And um, I will cover about the conclusion. So for the introduction, I would like to um, check uh, or like make sure some of the features of Islam that would specifically adaptive at the table to um, the halal industry. So first of all, Islam is a religion um, with the practice oriented doctrines, which means practicing what you learn in the book with is like very important in Islam. So they uh, provide very clear do's and don'ts, which means they allow specific things. They do not allow specific things. And um, further, they suggest um, distinguish of allowance in very specific five levels. So when you see the figures um, of the right side of the slides, you will see five different levels of allowance. Um, and it is really easy because halal and haram is no longer very exotic and like very new concept to us. Um, we all know that halal industry and their market is growing very rapidly and their market size is also very increasing. But so it and at the same time, it is also really easy to just think that everything would be divided either halal or haram while we have like these five um, specific level and they are rather in a spectrum than like with a very then like with very clear um we call like standards or criteria to judge like this is wrong or this is right and also we have to think that um Islam is a religion with very di diverse jurisprudence, which means um, it resulted in developing very different thoughts in details. They still do not violate the very general principles of Islam. They do not, um, what do you call, they do not like override the authority of Quran and like very um, authoritative, authoritative um, sources, but still there are some differences in details. And um, in specifically halal industry, it, it um, increases the requires and needs of the United Standards to certificate whether certain product is halal or not. So in my case, Malaysia um, is a, their dominant school of thoughts in Shafi in there. So I will cover the Shafi um, fix specifically. So um, my, all of like my presentation and my paper started with a very simple question that can traditional Islamic thought or Islamic law can be fully tradition in 21st century? Um, this is very important. And, but, and at the same time, like we may know or we may answer, but it is still not officially announced. Um, so, in order to answer the questions, I will cover the modernization or development, um, modernization in this case of Islamic law and how the development of operating body, how, what kind of um, institute or organization is functioning as an operating body of traditional Islamic law. And for the methodology, I um, actually made a in-person interview in 2020, January. Um, and I also referred some literature uh, research. So modernization of traditional Islamic law caused with um, several things. Um, first of all, the jurisprudence was established on very different environmental um, and maybe political fun uh, foundation at the moment. Um, 
And there are also increased import commodities that are doubtful um, nowadays. Remember, we covered that five um, spectrums of the, the allowance in the Islamic law. And there, um, it may not, it might not when the jurisprudence and like the very traditional Islamic law first established. But in 21st century, there are some um, products and there are some substantials or ingredients that stays in the gray zone that we cannot distinguish right or wrongness of it. So there are um, N uh, plus of it as also the Islamic world and like every country is connected with the name of the globalization and modernization with the development of the transportation. Um, the imported commodities are very increased and um, that even if like the same product, but it may use like different compromise um, or new raw materials or ingredients, and that became still doubtful. And um, so such um, situations resulted in raising questions and problems in contemporary context, which also um, increases the needs or demand of the practical adaptation or practical use of the traditional Islamic law. So this is like very um, tricky questions when it, that it was in Malaysia, it's solved, but it was very tricky. So in Malaysia, as I mentioned before, they, um, their dominant school of thought is Shafi and the Shafi schools uh, principally uh, forbids to consume, which means eat being insect. So is it okay to consume Kutsinil when Shafi school forbids consuming insects? Now, cochineal is a um, specific type of bugs. It's like beetles that eats the cactus uh, fruit and they make like the most beautiful pink um, food color in order to dye the fruit. So this, this question was raised in Malaysia and um, we will see how it went, but uh, let's just um, keep in mind like this question is just raised. So there was cause and there are some effects. Um, and responding to those uh, newly raised questions and problems in the contemporary context with the practical um, needs, um, Islamic law developed it in um, form of emphasizing role of fatwa. Actually, fatwa is um, the personal interpretation of the Islamic law, the, mufti, the mufti's interpretation to certain um, legal sources. And fatwa it became very significant into current um, consuming, um, or like current research to consumption habit because flexibility um, of fatwa is can be abrogated uh, the the previous decisions, which means you can abrogate the fatwa that were that was declared maybe like ten years ago, but you can abrogate it considering the change maybe like periodic change or. Um, the realistic manufacturers. And those such, uh, those such features of the flexibility suits for religious judgment in very practical questions, such as the Katsina that we saw. Um, and the fatwa uh, consequently let the consumers make the final decision of acceptance. Um, even if the Mufti declared the fatwa, it has no um, enforcement power to forcibly to make the public like forcibly adapt it. And um, validity of fatwa turns out into a form of hella labels. And um, specifically in Malaysia, the development uh, department of um, Islamic development, mm -hmm. Shakim takes uh, the full charge of the hella uh, certifications. So um, these are the overall process of until um, the HALA certificating from the raising problems to National Fatwa Committee. As I mentioned before, the role of fatwa was um, emphasized. And the, in Malaysia, um, they hold a National Fatwa Committee in order to declare a certain fatwa. So um, raising problems. Uh, individual or corporation may raise a problem or may raise a question to Jukim, um, specifically to make a religious declaration um, from for their certain products. And they first do the laboratory examinations, which means technical research, 
Um, from this stage, all the process is delegated to Jikin Research Division. And I also per, uh, personally thought that this um, stage or like this process or this step would be also very practical and very modern because it is anyway the area or like field of religion and they it means they acknowledge that the confusion or those um what do you call those complexity of the situations that um may not be fully met by the religious like discussion so after the laboratory exam, um, once the lab result says it is fine, um, then they again hold the National Fatwa Committee. And this is where the religious discussion actually takes place. And um, fatwa declaration is made in federal level, but still as Malaysia is a federal, um, federal nations, they have their own state government and it is like uh, totally up to them whether to take it or not. But when it comes to um, constitutional fatwa, like it is no longer fatwa when it comes to constitution that um, let's say there we are going to make some fatwa that murder will be forbidden. That is overall we have the state government has no choice to um, re uh, reject it. So in order to answer um, our first questions, is it okay to consume continue uh, when uh, Shafi schools forbids consuming insects? And um, as I understand it, the, the letters um, from the image would be a little small, so I would uh, like to read it. Based on the ruling, Muzakara, which means National Fatwa Committee, the like small group in the committee, uh, agreed to decide that the use of cochineal dyes in food, beverages, and consumer goods is allowed, and the rate of use allowed is in accordance with the ruling of the Ministry of Health Malaysia, as long as it does not cause harm. So um, even if this is the Beatles, um, um, sorry, I made a mistake when I mentioned about the Shafi school's fic, that they forbid consuming insects, except the locusts but still casino is not a locust. They are um, supposed to be forbidden, but they are allowed. Now, how does it happen and why did it happen? So um, traditional Shafi fiqh, um, as I mentioned before, um, they forbid <laughs> um, the consumption of the insects, but in very generally, um, they emphasize this relations between sources and specifically the Quran and Sunnah. And um, uh, there are some research that uh, not regulates, but like uh, classifies the levels um, of the relations between sources upon their reliance degree with the name of Al-Bayan. So specifically, like they um, divide into five levels, but I will not cover them. But um, uh, yeah, the Shafi schools um, emphasizes relations between sources, and they also allows um, compromise between the theories. So this um, is we can see like such um, characteristics from the personal life of the Imam Shafi himself, and but it has a has like limitation at the moment but it is like not um very critical limitation but also um but still at the limitation that he only accepts the sunnah of like prophetic sunnah so they still emphasize the authority of the sources but um they still do not um restrict the the boundary or um of the sources into the quran and to National Fatwa Committee, especially in Malaysia, declares fatwa in federal levels. But as I mentioned, they still do not have in, uh, enforcement power that um, the state government has can any time reject it. And the National Fatwa Committee is consistent with the scholars, which means Islamic religious scholars, um, scientists, attorneys, and et cetera, in order to add the credibility. And they, um, through, this is um, very unofficial, but um, through the personal interview, I could um, confirm that um, such fatwa that allows the use of katsinil is actually um, 
can be an example that considers realistic issues because um, the the like unit cost of the uh, in order to produce certain um, the items would be tripled unless they find very alternative materials. So considering the unit cost of the product itself can be described as very um, realistic issues. And in or uh, despite such issues, still they um, their allowance can be considered that they care about those real uh, realistic issues in very practical way. So a um, little bit fast, but to conclude, um, Islamic law um, has faced contemporary questions that are very hard to clarify by its traditional philosophy. And um, in order to, but still the demand is increasing and in order to um, respond to demand, the fatwa has been emphasized and, um, and the nat nature that it was based on was flexibility and the practicality that anyone can be um, uh, abrogated or anyone can be is free to be accepted. And um, in case of the Malaysia, they take the fatwa as um, religious uh, legal announcement with a consideration of the re realistic issues. And there are some um, there are some fatwas that are still declared but not um, accepted to almost any of the state government that may be counted as um, like counter side or counter effect of the fatwa that it may be um, declared like way too li in light level, but still um, the, the officials from the Shikim confirmed that um, that is also the characteristics of fatwa and um, the National Fatwa Committee in Malaysia that they only respond with the demand or with the specific requirements. So I really tried to um, make uh, my presentation a little bit light so that it won't cover very uh, heavy legal sources. But yeah, that was my presentation. Thank you for your attention.